Hey, what's up? Liron here, coming at you with another video in the series of three-dimensional shapes. I wanted this originally to be about people uh, and figures, but I think there is another kind of point in the detour we need to take before we get to that. We're gonna explore rounded shapes, cylinders and, and spheres and so on. And then we're gonna move into, into figures and I'm gonna show you a demo in the next video. Just as a side note, I'm taking it a little easy this week, so I'm filming all of these in advance, taking a bit of a vacation, which is why I was less active everywhere pretty much and which is why there's no live stream today so my apologies about that but i will go back to full force next week so just wanted to mention that let's jump into the video so we'll get going part number two of these this series and hopefully the next one we can do some demos of people even if we won't feel fully prepared i'm fine with that i want us to take this step by step but i did want to dive a little deeper on drawing um, this week just to kind of give you a few pointers I know these are more verbose but I just want these videos to be a more detailed guide and then I can dive deeper on your questions and answer those okay and by the way leave a question below if you're uh, if you have any right and I'll try and address these so today we're talking about spheres now spheres are a completely different beast than cubes and boxes so let me uh, explain what I mean by that. Spheres are tougher than boxes in a way, but in another way, boxes are tougher than spheres. What do I mean by that? Boxes force you to be specific. So for example, if you want to draw a finger, right, a single finger, it is very common to draw it as you see it and kind of do a sausage-like shape, right, something like this. Now, this doesn't force us to be as specific. We can just put the nail in, and we basically have something of a, you know, not fully accurate, but kind of a finger, right? But this lacks some structure. And the way to give things a better structure is by turning them into not spheres, not ovals, not cylinders, but rather boxes. So. If I were to box this out, this is one line, this is another line, another, another, and that's the top plane of the box, and this is the side plane here, right? This is the side plane. I'm not fully accurate, let me adjust that a bit, adjust my angles a bit, it's more like this. See how hard it is? It's very hard to turn things into boxes, now let me zoom in a bit. So it's very hard to turn things into boxes, it's far harder to interpret things like this finger as a box where this is where the nail is this is the size of the finger right that moves in that direction away from us what it requires us to know is not only the general direction but also the side plane the top plane the front plane front top side it's more specific so boxes which we started with which are easier to learn initially are still more important than spheres and cylinders and all the other structures we're going to look at but we still need to learn those as well so i'm actually going to start with a cylinder and i want to show you why cylinders are not that complex so as I've shown you in the previous lesson if you look at this top part right if we look at it straight ahead it's just a square but the more we tilt it the shorter this distance gets right so let me measure look at this this is the let's say diagonal distance right now as I rotate it look at how it shrinks look at how it shrinks it's now this big right so, so this thing here squeezes the more we the less we see of it right the less we see of it and we get to see more of these side planes it's kind of the same thing for cylinders in a way so let me show you so let's say you have a um, a coke can so basically you have two ovals that are connected with lines like this and that's your can right could be whatever it could be a tuna can it could be a pickle jar whatever it is that's the basic shape of a cylinder now look at what's going on here we don't have to be specific like we were with a 
Q-bar a box with a side plane or front plane. All we really have is this rounded shape, okay? Which makes cylinders a little easier to learn in a way. Okay, we're gonna make it a little more complex, but for now, cylinders are a little easier to learn thanks to that. Where's that side plane if we're indicating a finger using a cylinder, right? So this is my finger, this is the cylinder representing it. Where's the top, where's the bottom? I have no idea, right? But it is an effective tool for conveying these kinds of objects, okay? You don't always want a box. Sometimes a sphere will do a better job at it. So let's talk about these openings of the sphere because they work the exact same way as the cube does. The more we look at it from the front, the more what we'll end up with is just a circle. Assuming that this is a circular shape. It can be an ellipse, but we'll talk about that later. If it's a circle and we're looking at it, if it's a, a cylinder and we're looking at it right from the front, kind of like this thing here, the, my uh, masking tape, we'll just see a circle, right? We know that the other end is under there somewhere, right? We're looking at it from the front. This is what we see here, just a circle. But we know there's another end here that's farther from us, okay? Farther objects become smaller. How much smaller? Not sure, depending on the situation, depending on how close we are to one end, because remember, the closer we are, the bigger the delta is between the closer and farther elements, right? But we know it's there, somewhere behind it, and maybe it's here, right? Maybe it's as small as this, imagining this is transparent, right? Or maybe this is just a glass of water and you're seeing the bottom part of it. It could be many things, right? Now, as we rotate this thing here, that we're looking straight ahead like that, what's gonna happen is we'll see less of the top and more of the side of the cylinder like so, okay? So right now, this was the top, we're looking straight at the top, but now we're looking at it slightly from the side. If we move it all the way to the side, more than here as well, it's just gonna be, in theory, straight lines. Why? Because this top plane, that is an, a circle, and then it's an oval, and then it just turns into a straight line, okay? So this, in theory, would be a straight line. Now, reality is a little different because look at what happens here. These aren't straight lines, they're curved. Even when you're looking at it dead ahead, they're curved. What happens if we hold it a little farther? They appear to be closer together. In fact, let me do an experiment and zoom out. Good. So now that we're zoomed out, these still don't look flat, but look at what happens when I hold it closer to the camera. They look even curvier. These look even curvier than they were before because of that same effect of perspective. The closer an object is to us, to the viewer, to the camera, the more extreme perspective gets. Why that happens? Maybe in a future lesson because it's very complex, but we'll get to that. So let me turn the page here. Trying to use natural light, sorry if it's not the best um, because it's a little gloomy today. Let me zoom back in. So just like we saw with the cube, what you want to practice here is understanding how open or close this oval representing the circle is. So we have a circle, it's a perfect circle. The more we tilt the cylinder sideways, the closer this gets from the word closed, right? Closed. You want to understand and develop an intuitive understanding of how close or open it should be. Is it like this? Is it like that? Is it like this? Like that? How close or open it is, right? So, if we're looking at it really from the front, but not totally, and it's moving away from us, we're gonna have this extreme change in size. These lines, remember, are gonna converge to a vanishing point. If we continue them, there's the vanishing point, right here, okay? The more we look at it 
from above and directly at this circle, the vanishing point, where is it going to end up? In the dead center. But as I tilt it, it moves away, it moves away, it moves away. Okay? So if I were to look at it more from the side, if I were to rotate it more like this, you'll see less of this opening, right? Less of this opening and more of the side. And what will happen to these lines? They're going to converge less. Still converge, but much, much less. Okay? Now, what does this remind you of? What can we use this to um, explain? What kind of form? That could be a limb, right? So if you want to draw a, a forearm or the upper arm or whatever it is, this is a great way of representing the limbs, this, which is why this structure is really important. Now, remember, it's not as specific as a box. So if I were to turn this into a box, maybe it would be something like this, right? And now I'm very specific. I know that this is maybe the inside of the arm and this is the upper side, right? Or maybe if this is a forearm, maybe this is the top, right? And this is the side plane. But with cylinders, we don't have that. We don't need it, actually. It's a simpler structure. So here's where intuition kicks in once again. What you have to do is open up tons of reference photos of cylinders. It could be a roll of toilet paper. It could be whatever it is. It could be this thing, right? But you want to figure out how open the angle is of the top, right? How open, how close it is, and then measure yourself. How can you measure yourself? You can actually measure this distance and compare it to the rest of the cylinder, right? You can, you can place it onto uh, your computer screen or you can put the picture under the paper and see through it, put it on the window, but measure yourself and see how accurate or how far off you were and understand what your mistakes are, okay? Now, there is one very important concept to talk about when we discuss cylinders, and that is the main axis. This is the main axis of the cylinder. This is the main axis of the cylinder. If we were to look at it from above, this is the main axis of the cylinder. Okay? The long axis. I don't want I don't even want to say main, but the long, the long axis, okay? How do you recognize it? It's the longest. There's this axis and then we have the top or maybe let's reverse it this time. Maybe we have the bottom and then we have the top, okay? Something like that, but that's the long axis. What's the short axis? It is here. It is here. Sorry, that was a terrible <laughs> uh, truck horn, so I had to pause the video for a moment. But this is the short axis, right? This could be seen as the main axis, this could be seen as the secondary axis. Now, what's important to understand here? In this simple of a cylinder, the main axis is parallel to the secondary axis. And why is that important? Because that's what's going to dictate the shape of this oval. Let me better explain. Why does this oval look like this and not like this? How do I know it's like this and not like this? Let me show you. How do I know that this oval isn't in fact like this? Now when you look at it, something looks off. Something about this oval doesn't look right. And what is it? It's the fact that it's not parallel to the long axis. It's not parallel. This, in fact, represents a true possible structure. What is that structure? A structure where the top is simply not parallel to the long axis. Let me show you. If I were to look at this from a side view, what I would see is this. And you can imagine perhaps a cut-off bamboo shoot. Okay? So let's say a sword cut this bamboo and that's what it looks like. It cut it diagonally. Okay? And if we rotate it a bit, we will see more of that like so. Right? You are familiar with these kinds of structures. You've seen them somewhere in real life. Okay? But the simplest cylinder there is, the secondary axis is parallel, is perpendicular. Sorry, did I say parallel the whole time? It's perpendicular 
to the long axis. And my bad if I said that, I, I tend to do this mistake. So, how do you draw a cylinder accurately? You understand what the long axis is, you think to yourself, how open is it? Or how closed? Let's say it's very open. You're looking at it similarly to here. Okay, very open. So then, where's the opening? Is it this side, this side? Let's say this. it's this side. How do I know the angle of the uh, oval? It has to be perpendicular to the long axis. How open is it? That's going to be determined by your observational skills. Maybe it's this open, maybe it's this open, I don't know. You'll have to see, measure, compare, and then test yourself. But let's say it's this open, right? Then you draw the lines representing the long axis and you converge them. The more we look at the front, the more converged they're gonna be. The more we are closer to one end, to this front end of the cylinder, the more converged they're gonna be. So this could be the same cylinder as this, but maybe we're looking at this side a little closer, from up close, we're holding it closer to our eyes, okay? Let's do this again with a real life example. So we have this thing, right? Where's the long axis? This is the long axis, right? And if it were longer, it would have been easier to tell. But let's say, so I'm holding it up like this. I'm trying to not to cast too much shadow. Long axis, short axis. How open is it? It's not super open, but you can still see quite a lot of it. So it's gonna be like this, not like this, like this. This is our axis for the ellipse, like this. Okay, and I know my ellipse is, it looks terrible. Let's redo this. Long axis, short axis, ellipse, and then lines representing the sides, and a similar one here. Now, this is another concept we'll have to talk about. How open is this cylinder? The answer is actually quite simple. The farther it is, the more open it's gonna be, but very, ever so slightly. So if this is this open, this is gonna be slightly more open, but smaller. So it's both smaller because these lines are converging. Again, remember, they're gonna meet somewhere, but it's also more open. And the more we move down, the more open it's gonna be. Let me show you how this plays out in perspective, okay? Same as we did before. Let's say there's a scene here. And in this scene, we're looking at a huge pillar from below. So this pillar moves away from us. I'm gonna draw it based on, let's say, intuition or whatever, you know. This moves away from us. And in fact, let's make it even more complex. This pillar, we're looking at its top here. It's not even a pillar, it's like a, just a cylinder we're holding in front of us, right? Now, those rubber band effects, right, that people talk about, what do they represent? They just represent this curve here, this ellipse, right? And I told you, when it's like this, Closer to us, it's gonna be this open. But as it moves away from us, it's gonna open up more and more gradually with the same angle. Open up more and more and more gradually with the same angle, okay? Let's imagine that this is a uh, box, okay? Box, it has side plane, top plane, whatever it is, right? Right plane, left plane, okay? I'm gonna show you how we turn this into a cylinder. If I were to continue dropping these lines from the vanishing points, representing parallel lines, because this is parallel to this, because this is parallel to this, right? These lines are parallel. And as they move away from us, they appear to be smaller, just like here. Look at what happens here. And here, and here, and here. And if we were to continue this structure, right, what would happen here, and here? Can you see these angles? 
let's complete them into squares or rather yeah squares like so like so and it, this can be confusing right so ask yourself what does this line look like it's parallel to this line right so it goes somewhere in that general direction so what vanishing point should i use this one okay and this gives you an indication of how open or close the oval is. Look at this oval, but look at this oval. Look at this oval. It goes the other way, right? This is the part that's closer to us, whereas this on top is the part that's closer to us. If you master a box, you will master a cylinder. It's that simple. And if you do this enough, it all becomes intuitive. You don't need all of this construction. You have a cylinder, you know you're looking, let's say, just from the bottom. You start to get a sense for how open or closed these are. You just start to develop a sense for this, right? If it moves away from us in a more extreme way, that's our secondary axis, that's our oval and then it moves away like that right and then you can tell you can just tell where that's gonna be right with not a hundred percent accuracy with 80 percent accuracy with 90 percent accuracy right whatever it is you can tell that's the kind of understanding i want you to develop and you can use boxes and cubes to your advantage here so if you're unsure about an oval or or a, or a cylinder all you have to do is use a box. So how do we do a box? Let's say we have this line here and this line here representing this opening, right? And then we continue. Assuming we mastered boxes, right? You Maybe you'll want to use a vanishing point. You'll, maybe you'll have to actually draw these lines, right? And then let's drop this line here, this line here, this line here. And we have kind of a box, right? It's not a square, it's not, nothing here is of equal lengths, right? But if you constrain an oval here within this box and within this box, and then you connect the dots, you got yourself a cylinder. Crappy cylinder, but still a cylinder, right? And if this angle is quite open, because we're almost at the height of this, right, the horizon line is here, and this is just slightly below the horizon line. And then this moves in a very extreme way, extreme way away from us. And that's the bottom of that building or whatever that is. You can turn this building very easily into a sphere, into a, a cylinder. This is a closed cylinder, main axis, secondary axis is perpendicular to the main axis. Secondary axis, more open, down below, and you've got yourself a cylinder. It's that simple. And then you can use the same perspective lines to figure out the angles. So that's going to be the angle here. That's going to be the angle there, right? Now, let's address one last issue that people talk to me about. They don't know, so they see this cylinder, and they're, they're just not sure where these rubber bands where these cross sections are gonna go. Do they go like this? Do they go like that? It can be very confusing. First off, if you can see one side of the cylinder, it's very easy to determine because they're gonna be parallel to it. Parallel, right? Like so. But the answer is quite simple even if you don't see the opening side, right? So let's say you have a scene you have an horizon, a horizon line, right? And you have a huge pillar and you have no idea like, do you see the top, do you see the bottom, do you see both, right? On the horizon line, the rubber band is gonna be just like that, a straight line. Anything above it, it's gonna be opened towards the horizon line and a more extreme angle, and a more extreme angle. Anything below, again, is gonna be the other way around. So the belly is aimed away from the horizon line. That's the most important thing. Why? Why, did, why is that the truth? Very simple. Imagine two vanishing points, drop them towards this, and look at what you get. You get this. You don't get this. You get this. Okay? You drop them here. You get this. 
you drop them here, you get this, more open, more open, right? More open, more open, more open. You see more of the oval, a little less, a little less, flat, you see nothing. See a little more, see a little more, see a little more, okay? That's pretty much everything there is to cylinders and boxes. I want you to practice this after you mastered cubes. I want you to try and convert them into cylinders, right? And then I want you to just draw cylinders, right? Now, if you want a challenge, ask yourself what would happen if when I look at it from the top, it looks like an ellipse. What would happen if this is the top view, right? Well, think about it. If you're gonna tilt this cylinder, it's gonna be even more of a narrower angle, right? So even a slight tilt, see? Even a slight tilt is gonna still be quite narrow. Even a major tilt, sorry, even a major tilt is gonna be quite narrow still. It's not gonna be open like we've seen before. It's gonna be much narrower, see? And that could be maybe a squashed uh, teacup or, you know, um, one-time use kind of thing, right? Uh, but that's the kind of factor you want to play around with because unlike the cube that has top, right, left, bottom, whatever, this only has two main functions. It has the long axis and it has the short axis and nothing else. There is no side plane, right? There's no, you can't tell where this side begins and ends because there is no side like this. It's just a cylinder. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. With that, we can wrap it up. Let me know in the comment down below your thoughts and if, whether or not you found this helpful. In the next one, we'll skip spheres or maybe I'll mention just a few things, but we'll tackle people and we're, we're just gonna draw figures. So I wanna thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you still aren't. Let me know your thoughts and I will talk to you again real soon.